Hello everyone, and welcome to RNG University. On tonight's episode, we're gonna play Azorius Temple. And uh, this is the deck that I crafted myself. Uh, and I'm pretty proud of it because this takes me back a little bit to uh, when Modern was first introduced. And one of the strongest deck that a lot of people kind of wanted to play in Modern because it was very popular in Standard was Is It Delver. The idea of Is It Delver was that you land a Delver and then you just protect it with a bunch of counter spells and burn spells and you just attack them with a 2 3 flyer until you win. Now, uh, of course, we still have Delver in the standard, but I don't think it's good of a card. There's so much removal. So instead, what I wanted to try out was the Sleep Cursed Fairy. Right? It's a good card on its own. It's a 1 mana 3-3 three, three Flying Ward 2. That is insanely good. But you also have an ability where you can pay 2 mana to untap it. So you kind of have pseudo vigilance against cards like Wandering Emperor. Now, with all of those good abilities on a one drop, you gotta think about what's the downside. The downside is that it comes into play with three stun counter. That's it. That's not really much, right? It just means that you cannot attack for three turns after you play it, assuming you don't use the ability to untap it. That, you know, in the late games, that's, that's always gonna be detrimental because it's a one mana do nothing. But if you can land a Sleep Curse Fairy turn one, you start attacking on turn 4. With a temple deck, starting attacking with a 3 mana or uh, with a 1 mana 3 3 on turn 4 doesn't hurt as much. And if you're able to keep temple, right, that also can get you the win when you get to about turn 4 or 5, you'll be you'll be able to have a pretty strong board out there. And that's the idea of why Sleep Curse Fairy is in this deck and why this deck is synergized around that. Now, of course, with Azorius Temple, there's another card I really love, and that is Jace Reawaken. He is not a 4-drop, he is a 2-drop that only comes in on turn 4. And the idea is that we can uh, stick, land a Jace Reawaken, and then plot Wedding Announcement. At least that was my plan for this deck, right? We can uh, plot a Wedding Announcement or plot a Ledger Shredder and then, you know, get the Temple on. Because this is basically 2 mana to get 3 mana. Right, two mana to get three mana for the next turn, and then also get a card on board our opponent really have to deal with. They can't just let Jace live. So everything else in this deck kind of helps synergize around that. Uh, and then well, I also have a hidden tech in Hopeful Initiate. I saw a lot of Simulacrum decks out there, and then you know how much I hate the enchantment decks. So this Hopeful Initiate can actually help us target those. Uh, we train so that we can uh, grow the Hopeful Initiate, and then we can remove the plus one plus one counters to blow up an artifact and enchantment whenever we need to. And guess what? We can train not just the Hopeful Initiative, we also have Ledger Shredder, right? Hopeful Initiative says remove two plus ones on counter from anywhere, not from him. So if we grew the Ledger Shredder by one through a Knife Trigger, we can just uh, remove one from Hopeful Initiative, remove one from Ledger Shredder, and we can still blow up an artifact or an enchantment. We also have Wandering Emperor to put plus ones on counters on that. Wandering Emperor can also exile uh, a creature or uh, create Samurais. Wandering Emperor is very good in the Temple deck. So that's, let's talk about the whole deck list. Uh, that's, those are the techs. Let's talk about the whole deck list. We have uh, two Hopeful Initiate. I thought about running four, but I cut two to run two Spell Pierce in case I wanted to counter like a Sunfall on an opponent's turn on turn five. I uh, also have four Sleep Curse Fairy, of course. Then in the two drop, uh, four Get Lost, four Ledger Shredder, four No More Lies. Pretty standard, right? We have a Removal, we have Temple, we have Counter Spells. Uh, I did think about running the... Uh, the, the bovine intervention instead of get lost to get them artifacts instead of a uh, treasure or get them I think the bovine gets a 2-2 instead of a treasures right or not treasures maps um, and I thought about it how useful that would be but this takes out planeswalkers and enchantments rather than creatures and artifacts so uh, I'm more worried about in, uh, planeswalkers and enchantments than creature uh, than artifacts really in most cases and artifacts we can remove with hopeful initiate anyway so that's why I, I'm sticking with the four get loss uh, and then we have four uh, wedding announcement of course to temple out and then four Ava interrupter to counter our opponent's temple and the great thing about Ava interrupter is that if our opponent has let's say a uh, cat Cavern of Souls, and they think, hey, I can get underneath the No More Lies, they can't stop me. Guess what? I will still stop them. Even in the Interrupter, get back to your hand. And then, if they want to play that with two mana, and they, they don't play uh, with the Cavern of Soul mana, no more lies will get them. That's kind of the idea of Avon Interrupter as well. Uh, three Jace. I could not fit in four Jace, and I don't want four Jace. Every time I run Jace Reawaken in my deck, I will always draw him in the opening hand. So I hated that, so I'm cutting that down to three. And then uh, four Wandering Emperor, and just two Virtue of Loyalty. I can grow our board and kill our opponent that way with good tempo. So that is the non-land side of the temple deck. Because we're a temple deck, 23 lands total. We're very short on uh, mana curve, so we are also short on mana, right? You can see one drops, two drops, 
maybe three drops only this is a three uh, this is a turn four but only two drops so only six uh cards that cost more than four mana and virtual loyalty and you don't always have to play the loyalty side you can play the art and fealty side for the two two and that's only a two drop as well so yeah Everything is basically one drop, two drop, three drops for this temple deck without Thalia, believe it or not. And so that's why our, our 23 land, land base, we have one Iganjo, three Planks, one Ottawara, three Islands, four Darkar Wastes, four Deserted Beach, two Restless Anchorage, four Sea Chrome Coast, and one Mirix. Mirix is good for growing the board, uh, but you don't need that many of, uh, because it, it is colorless and we need a lot of color pip manas here. Uh, the Sea Chrome Coast is necessary because we're a fast deck. The Restless, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, Deserted uh, beach is pretty good later on you definitely don't want to play it on your opening hand unless you're going second which i'm going a lot uh but desert beach is something that you want to mulligan if you have a lot in your opener uh and dark card waste is helpful because we can play any card we want and for a temple deck we don't care as much about losing life as getting the temples so our opponent lose all of their life and that's why i only have two restless anchorage because i don't want a lot of tap lands right restless anchorage is good for attacking but we're not a control deck so we're not likely to turn restless anchorage live ever Every game so that's whole deck list that I crafted myself I'm pretty proud of and uh, let's go into the games all right our opponents gonna be the Palika Palika power world Laika I do like a power world opponent goes first unfortunately but we got two no more lies so I will lie to our opponent swamp minor all right well no more lies is not gonna help against this Maybe our Sleep Curse Fairy will be able to in three turns. Tap land. I I'm happy with that. He's gonna attack me for two. Got another play. Don't got another play. Well, we also don't got another play. So that will be all. Unfortunately, we don't have an extra white for the Wandering Emperor. So we're just gonna keep taking the damages here. Ow. No plays, huh? Well, he's not gonna play anything. Probably a deduce. No deduce. We will also have no plays. Fairy Mastermind. Do I want to stop that? Oof. How much do I care about this? Compared to a turn 3 play? I'm not really drawing cards. Okay. <laughs> he has two lands and he didn't want to play it out even though he has a fairy mastermind. Fair enough. Alright. Our opponent is now the Quisotar. Is that... I, I, Kisotar? He's gonna give me some castle. Opponent goes first. Alright. Yeah. Of course. Of course opponent goes first. Why would it ever be anything different? This is the reason why I don't like playing temple decks, even though I think they're probably the strongest deck out there. Uh, opponent always goes first, so, you know, you already lose the temple. You're playing a deck where you start off the game behind. It is not fun. Here, drop a mountain and do your thing. Close enough. Alright, so it's the, uh... Oh, it's pirates. Okay. Not what I expected. I thought it was going to be the uh, synthesizer deck. Yes, you have haste. You can attack. Must you think this? Th I mean, I, I guess Diamond League is worse than Platinum because, uh, you know, I just got here and this guy suck. I might lose to him, and that's how Magic the Gathering goes, right? It doesn't matter how good your opponent is. It's all about the draws. And oh, well, it's not even about the draws as much as who goes first. They go first. Here, I am cursed. This is actually a pretty fitting card for the deck, or for me, because I am sleep cursed. Come on. I can keep clicking. Okay, this is going to be a long game. Um, yeah, nothing else I can say about this. Just got to wait for our opponent to rope or turn two. I mean, they had they had such a long time deciding whether or not to attack with the Reckless Lackey. Going to the turn two with the possibilities are almost infinite. I guess they're gonna go through the ropes. They're looking at the card. 
We're playing an island. But I don't know why the timer resets. That's the really annoying part. Alright, attack for one again. Okay, uh, I guess I have a lot of no more lies. Well, I have that many no more lies, I gotta hold them up, right? Those are pretty good cards. I encounter whatever they play. If they ever play anything. Tomb Raider. Those don't do anything unless they have artifacts, so I don't care too much. And if they don't play anything, I'll just use the Sleep Curse Fairy, so I'm not using up my mana. Well, I'm not wasting up my mana. I'm taking a lot of damage, but they're running out of cards. Oh, now the decision comes again. Oh boy, everybody crack a pack of cookies or something and watch this burn. Alright, so no, no place until the end turn. I definitely can activate the Sleep Curse Fairy one more time. Lay a tap land. They're gonna burn me or something? At the end of turn? No, nothing. Pirates? Can't counter that. Oh wait, no, it's a gold. It ETBs is a pirate, but it's not a pirate right now. <laughs> oh man, that's just a terrible player today, huh? Alright, our opponent's gonna beat the Wooster 70. Wooster 70? Opponent goes first. Nothing new here. Um, we do have, we do have a sleep curse fairy, so good enough of a turn one play, I guess. See Chrome Coast. Time to ping ourselves. Ow. Demolition Field. All right, I can virtues. I don't have to worry about much. Three mana. It looks like a blue eye control deck. Shieldress Edict. Oh, well, it's non token, huh? Yeah, I knew that. I, I totally knew that. I, I, I know exactly what was happening. Now I have a bunch of tokens. Wedding announcements on board. They seem to have. Some place they want to do. I want to draw a card. It just takes it. All right, it just takes it. Uh, four mana. They're gonna go to five mana. I don't have anything, so I'll just draw a card. Sleep curse fairy. Memory deluge, maybe. You know what's fun about memory deluge? Not as good when it's plotted. Now they just draw two cards. And they use up their mana. It's just draw two, you don't get to choose. <laughs> yeah, memory deluge is not that good when they get interrupted. Alright, so they could try to farewell us next turn. Um, do I care about the farewell? I mean, I can't do anything against that, so. This is what happens when I don't draw lands, I guess. So I could hold up an interrupter to their next turn play. And then it's a lot more damage, right? Maybe I just do that. Yeah. Finally a land. Now a big board. If they sunfall, they're dead. Okay, so they're not going to be able to do much. I have lethal on board. Uh, I don't have lethal on board. This is only n 8 damage, not 9. But I will do it. I will attack. The Wandering Emperor. Go back. Bring them to one, and then I will play. Let's see. They'll probably boar wipe here, so. For them to play the Wandering Emperor, it cost me, like a bunch. See, I knew it was a farewell gun. But he's at one, and I have an anchorage, so 
What's the plan here? Game? GG! Tempoed out. Uh, every deck just gets tempoed out by, you know, me having a turn one player. That's important, because I never get to go first. Alright, our opponent is the... Is that Lurgorf? Lurgorf? Is it LH in there? La Horgorf? Oh, jeez. Not only are we going second, we don't have a turn one play because we have islands, so I got a mulligan this. It's a pretty good hand if I have, if these are planes, but they're not planes. Alright, way worse. Do I keep this hand? It's, it's way worse. But it's a temple deck. I, can I go down to six? Or can I go down to five? That's the question, right? What is my opponent play? I have to go down to five. I have no temple. Alright, go down to five here. Uh, it's very easy to pitch these. They're never coming out. Alright, here is the Sleeker's Fairy. They're gonna bat me. There's the bat. Take the Get Loss. Take the Shredder. Take the Shredder. I have a Get Loss. Maybe it would have been better to play the planes there, but I could get punished by drawing a little C Chrome Coast. So, yeah, there's another bat. They're gonna take the get loss, right? Okay. Do I want them to take the get loss? If I use the get loss, they they use it on the bat. It's kind of a dead card, anyways. Take it again. No surprise there. Alright, well... Can't really anchorage this turn, so... I may, do I want to hold up a spell pierce? I might. It might literally on me. Yeah, definitely get punished by going down to 5, right? But there's nothing I can do to stop that. You don't have lands. Do I attack here? He's not going to block. I got to get somewhere. I mean, it's a temple deck. I got to get somewhere. He gets his land. He gets his Liliana. Perfect draws every time. This is my home, and I don't appreciate it when people touch my things. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? Attack so he can't block for Liliana? That's interesting. Why would he do that? Um, I could Restless Anchorage attack Liliana, but I think it's better just to like this. Fine. I'll take my zombies and leave. <laughs> Not sure if this is good, but uh, he probably has another Liliana. Why he didn't protect it? Yeah. When I win, you're telling me what you know. Of <laughs> Off you go. Who needs to be good when you can have this kind of crappy hand? A Wandering Emperor. Oh, that's pretty good. But he could definitely have a cut down on my creature here, right? So I could Emperor to get back Spell Pierce. How good can that be? I could Restless Anchorage. The cut down will kill it. Ooh, that's kind of tricky. Alright, well, we'll just end turn here. Didn't use his... Uh, that's not right. I am the Emperor of Ka 
Come it's go exile. And you protect my people. Is he coming back? This is what you get for hurting my people. Huh. Kills my anchorage. Let's get another island, I guess. We'll get a plane. Uh, plane's fine. He's got mountains in his deck? What is his deck? Drop it. to discard. Corrupt. Alright, well, the Emperor has to die here, right? To give me a creature, the creature would just die, but... It has to Until happen here. next time, then. Guards, to me! Do I make a Mirix token right now? It does get bigger, but then it can it's susceptible to removal, so I'll wait for it. You never know. March. Doesn't want the march. Alright. Cut down. Doesn't want the cut down. Will he attack for three? He does attack for three. Does suggest he has another removal. You want a plus? No plus. Alright, let's attack first. Do not touch me again. I could kill the bat. And then play Ledger Shredder. How good is that? Ah, it gives my board bigger, right? So let's do that. You started this fight. I'm going to end. You're done. Untaps everything, and it's a uh, two two and two four. Turn the table a little bit, but I still don't have a card in my hand. You can kill the Ledger Shredder uh, with a cut down, maybe. Is that the plan? Double virtue. Oh, thanks for giving me a connive trigger, I guess. You want to discard your last card? You don't want to discard your last card. And if you don't discard your last card, you discard your Liliana. Whatever. Luck favors the foolish after all. I'll put it over here. Make it a 3-3, and I'll get a 1-1. Did one, one. that have boar wipes? Um, or I can have two 2-2s. Two, two. No need. I plot nothing. Now I must step out of the shell. Shieldred, huh? That's pretty scary. We draw. We're cursed. Okay, so I don't need this mana. I could draw and discard a card, but I'll take more damage. I don't want to do that. We must protect the people. Alright, let's get bigger. No attacks, but our boar will get bigger. Does not untap this for some reason. Right? Oh, it loses one of those. He draws a land. That's uh, perfect timing. What does he have in his graveyard, though? Just bats? It's annoying, but it's... I don't think it's the end of the world here. Maybe it's better to keep it in my hand. I could draw a card, but it will die to the uh, shield it. So I will just go out and attack. He blocks one. All right. 
So I could draw, go down to 9. He can bring back something scary, so... Let's just draw on this card. I take the damage, for sure. Unfortunately, but something that I have to live with. Let's also make a plus one, plus one on the Samurai for the Sleep Curse Fairy. Uh, they're all kind of tricky, huh? Well, the Samurai can trade with Shieldred. I trap everything and I get bigger. You can get a card. Take my Ledger Shredder. Maybe? I don't know. Double virtue is scary. You gotta have to fight through a double virtue. Definitely not with that land. Okay, I can get a plus on something. Just gonna block the shredder out. No? Block the Sleep Curse Fairy to prevent the damage. Okay. Goes down to 12. Goes down to 12. I could make another one. I go down to 5 this way, right? But I think I can go down to 5. Let's see what I can get. There's another land. It's a Sleep Curse Fairy. Just gonna go wide. Just gonna go very wide. Oh, that's very, very wide. They're gonna bring two barrels back, but, uh, you know, bring back the bat if you want. I have nothing. Liliana? I mean, it's really not gonna make me sack anything. Not gonna make me sack anything important. Sacrifices must be made. Okay, we'll draw, we'll go down to three. Spell Pierce is a dead card. Okay, so this is gonna be one, two, or okay, he blocks the three and the six and the seven, right? He still takes these and he still die. Uh three plus three plus six, that's nine, twelve. So he doesn't die. I have to double and tap here to kill him. I can also draw a card first. Draw a card, go down to one. What can I get here that matters? Uh, get loss? I could get a get loss. Right, and that's the only card. I draw one card here, I don't draw two cards. Not even a spell. Okay, so. Uh, I can't untap this, but I can bounce a shield. Rip. Let's pump this. Remember your training. All in your face. Am I winning or are you winning? I don't. I don't know the math. I still think I win, but I don't, I don't know the math. Okay, okay, they're negative one. So yeah, I still win. GG! Yay! Stupid mode on a five. Still pull it out. That's how we temple. Alright, our opponent's gonna be Sub Bannet. Suburb Bannet? Is that Suburb Bannet? Hey, guess what? Opponent goes first. How many games does this make today? Nine? I don't remember the number, but yeah, this is definitely not 50-50, I can tell you that. It, like, this is the saltiest part about Arena. It's, I remember, I think it was Yu-Gi-Oh! 
uh, or one of those online games. I don't know which one. I haven't played a lot of the online card games. But I watch a lot of videos, but uh, they have a rock paper scissors system, and that, I think that's slightly more fair than this crap, where our opponent always goes first. This is a very reactive hand, right? Turn one, nothing. Turn two, no more lies, and they just you know have a cavern. All right, let's do it. I'm sick of mulliganing. See from close. I also have a C Chrome Close. I also have a land that doesn't do anything. Not gonna run my Shredder into a counter spell here. Three mana. Market Gnome. Um. Huh. Don't care about a Gnome. Market known, huh? That's interesting. Well, let's just hold up more counter spells. They can't attack us for a 0 3, so. Let's see what else they're gonna do. Afterwards, I can shred her into uh, No More Lies. Not having a turn 1 fairy is what's gonna cost us. We will be so far ahead with a turn 1 fairy. But no. Another ledger shredder. I might get countered, but I, at least I have two, right? He lets the Ledger Shredder out, and I'm not going to play anything else. Now he can play a 2-mana spell and not have a counter. Not a 3-mana spell. That's important. Plays nothing. Well, I, I'm happy with that. Second Shredder. Okay, well, I'm gonna attack you with one shredder. And I'm holding up two counter spells. Spring Loaded Saw Blade deals five damage to target cre tap creature and opponent controls. Uh, I, I'm not fighting over that. You got it. Should have seen that coming. But it's not like I could never attack with a shredder, so I grow the shredder till it is greater than five, then you can't deal with it. That's kind of funny. Simulacrum, yeah, none of that, please. Market no. Thank you. Uh, what do I pitch here? Probably the Seacrum Coast. Kind of a dead car. Uh, let's see. I can also pitch a get loss. Get loss is pretty important against a creature. Not much else. It grows a shredder, but I don't want to just do that to grow a shredder, right? Cool. So now I could play my wedding announcement. And then a sleep curse fairy. See what I can draw here. Is it a no more lice? No, but it is a very good card. Take two. Alright, the hopeful initiate can hopefully break his simulacrum synthesizer. It's important, that's why I have the uh, ledger shredder in the deck, because I get the one once. Or the, the plus one plus one counter, right? The plus one plus one counter can feed the uh, hopeful initiate if I needed to, to blow up a uh, artifact or enchantment. That's why the hopeful initiate is in the deck. Let's see if they actually do what I wanted to do. If he plays a simulacrum, I will counter. Well, I'll counter this too. Now he's tapped out. He still can attack with those. I guess that's why there was a stick. So I don't really need any more cards, right? I definitely want to attack so I get the thing. I, I mean, get a card draw. I don't need any board. That's what I'm saying. Alright, we'll Mirix. 
to draw a card, I can draw a get loss. Annex Sentry. That's interesting. What are they targeting? Um, I think the get loss is as good as any. Actually, I could just use this. Why am I using a spell? I can break the Annex Sentry, and then he can play another spell. There. Broken. <laughs> yep. Does not work the way you want it to. GG! The Hopeful Initia just lock him out. That's why a lot of people think Hopeful Initia is good in only the mono white deck, but it's actually really good in a temple deck to stop these uh, artifact and enchantment abilities. Welcome back, everyone. Now that you've seen those games, how did you feel? Uh, I gotta say, I got pretty salty towards the end. I think I played... How many games did I played total? Uh, it wasn't nine. It was seven games. Uh, all seven games were... Uh, on the uh, on the draw, I was never on the play. Not even once. Every game I was on the draw, and um, of the of all the games I'm on the draw, wherever I draw Sleep Curse Fairy, right, and I played them on turn one, I won those games. And then one or two games where I didn't draw it, and I still were able to win. That was on the backside of Ledger Shredder, which is very very strong. And then of course the Temple and the rest of the deck is very good. The fun part about this deck is that you really never not have any play. So the uh, the hard part about Arena is sometimes Shuffler screws you over and you don't have any plays. This deck doesn't doesn't have that uh, sort of downside. You always have a play, it's just whether or not your play is going to be good enough against your opponents. Uh, and that really depends on how you play it and how you draw it. And uh, in the very last game you did see the Hovo Initiate, my secret tech worked out right it it is going to destroy an artifact or enchantment it is not here for growing a big human board it's just so that we can have a removal on top of a creature a creature that is a one drop so yeah this, this deck is fun this deck is very strong and i love it and uh the only addition or alteration i might make uh, i might cut a no more light cut a jace add in two hopeful initiates that's that's how i feel i, th I think hopeful initiates is that good and one of the biggest things that i've noticed playing this deck is you absolutely want to have a turn one play it's a temple deck you want to be able to play something turn one you don't want to not have a turn one play so that is all I have for you today. Thank you very much for joining me, and I will see you guys next time.